Okay, let's talk about script logic. Script logic is the order in which things occur in a script, or the order in which things are allowed to occur. Uh, that, that's why when, when we say something uh, was a logic error, what we mean is that the script did something that was not expected. It, it behaved a certain way that was, it was not supposed to. That's, that's not to be uh, confused with a syntax error or a runtime error. Logic errors are very, very different because the program will not crash. The script won't crash. You won't get an error message from the uh, script that something went wrong. It, you will just have to find out by looking at the output that, uh, and, and, and analyzing the output um, and the results of running the script to determine that something went wrong. So script logic, it's all about the flow, the, the order in which things can occur inside of a script. So <clears throat> let's, let's take a look at some script logic here. Um, here's, a, here's a diagram, an activity diagram of a script. And since I'm just trying to illustrate the concepts of script logic, I figure I can keep this kind of fun, kind of light. Uh, this is a game. It's a game called Pig, a dice game. In fact, it's not really a dice game. It's a die game because you only use one die. And this particular diagram will explain the, uh, the logic behind the, um, the way this script is going to run. So up here, we see this is where I'm going to start. The black circle represents the starting point. Now, the first way my script is going to run is the player is allowed to roll. And now off of this particular action that the, uh, the player can take, there are some other actions that might come next based on what occurs. So you'll notice uh, along that path and along that path are two little uh, strings here that are inside of brackets. One says roll two, three, four, five, six, and one says roll one. And what this means is that that's called a guard a thing there. And what it means is that if they roll two, three, four, five, six, then that's where you need to go. And then they will tally the turn is the next thing we're going to do. However, if the player rolls and rolls a one, you would follow it down to this, which is the computer rolls, because at that point you would have lost your turn. So let me explain the, the rules of the pig game. It's basically pretty simple. The player rolls. If the player rolls a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then that is tallied. In each turn, you get, it, you get the, the, the amount tallied up that the individual player rolls. So if it was a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I actually have an option to roll again. And, or I, I, could have an, I could actually uh, hold. I haven't won yet because in order to win, I have to have over 100 points. So if I only rolled a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 for my first roll, this one would not be an option. However, these other two would be an option. So if I, let's just say I rolled a 3. And right now my tally is 3. And I choose to roll again. So I roll. And then I roll a 4. So at this point, when it tallies, I currently for this turn have 7 points. I have the option to hold. And if I hold, I get to keep those seven points. However, if I roll again and choose to do that, there is a possibility that I would roll a one. And if I roll a one, my turn ends, I do not get to keep the points that were tallied up, and the computer gets to roll. So as you can see, there, is, there are two paths to get to the computer rolling. One of them is what we would call the happy path. Player rolls, rolls a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You tally it up. The player decides to be prudent and hold and keep the points. So the player holds, and then the computer rolls. And when the player decides to hold, the player also gets some points added up from what they had been tallying. The unhappy path, of course, is rolling 1. And uh, then the computer also gets to take its turn. Now, the way the computer is going to play this game is, is very simple. The computer is not going to make too many decisions. It's just going to roll five times. And if in those five times it rolls a one, of course it loses its turn. However, if it doesn't roll a one, it will at the end of those five rolls tally up that. And that particular computer turn will become its, added to its score. And then the player, it will be the player's turn. 
So that's pretty much the rules. Uh, now there's a little bit more down here to my program. So at if one point when I break a hundred I win so if while tallying I'm rolling and the tallying occurs and it's, it occurs to the tallying process that I've scored over a hundred points I will it will trigger off this win and then I will get a choice at that point okay I won so do I want to play again or do I want to quit uh, you will also have that option after the tallying of the computer's turn if the computer wins you get the same choice so whenever the computer wins it also comes down here to this choice do you want to play again anytime the player wins you get that choice so as soon as somebody wins that's what you're going to get um, okay so using that as a basic framework in the next video I'm going to show you how to take this logic and apply it in a script and this is just a basic basic framework for the script um, there will be actually a little bit more detail added later so this is not going to be an actual physical diagram but it's more of a logical uh, understanding of what's going on inside the script. And we will continue this in another video.